Hello community! Less than 11 hours ago, we got some new information by OpenAI on its new product. And we have on GitHub some new Python file on the Assistant API. So let's have a look at the new data and the new explanation. We have a brand new API. And please notice, it is an API. And it is now a stateful API. So. What does it mean for us? How does it work? What is new? Now, let's start at the very basic. So, in the old chat completion API of OpenAI, the primitives were simply messages on which you perform a completion with a specific model. That's it. Now, with the new API, our assistant API, we have different primitives. We have the assistant, which is more or less the base model, like a GPT-4 Turbo model or a GPT-3.5 Turbo model. We have the instruction, the system prompt, the tools that we're going to use, like, for example, the code interpreter. And we have some text that we put into our assistant for do the embedding and rag, retrieval augmented generation. Now, the next object, the primitive, is a thread. This is simple, a state of the conversation between the human user and the system. And we have a run, which powers here the execution of an assistant on a specific thread, including the response and the multi-step use tool. Okay, now that we know, we can build us now a little GPT, a little assistant. So we have here thread. This is our conversation. So you see here, the thread has an ID and a name. And my message is, hey, how much should I contribute to my retirement plan? And then I run this thread with a specific assistant. I can use here code interpreter as a tool. Then a message is created here. And I get back the answer by the system. So you have here thread level and here your run. Beautiful. And the longer your, country, your communication is, the longer your thread will become. Great. So let's talk about the setup of all of this. We use here now Python SDK, so we updated it. We have some nice things. And the easiest way to get started with the Assistant API is our Assistant Playground. Now, you know our little playground here. We have an assistant playground where you can name your assistant API. Yes, I know. So I called it assistant API explainer. And then I give it some instruction. I say, hey, you're helpful for yes, 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 you know this. And then you choose a model. And hey, why not go with the GPT 3.5 Turbo model? It is cheaper. And now comes here the nice things. We'll have a look at this in detail. You can have function with function calling. This is great. Then you can activate here your code interpreter if you want to have here Python computations performed within your GPT. And the beauty is here really the retrieval. So here you can upload now almost any file, Python file, Jupyter Notebook file, PDF files, MD files, whatever you like. And it is automatically an auto rack system that takes care about this. You do not need any third party plugin or anything else at all. So just say file, upload. And as you can see, I uploaded here my Python Notebook file where there is some specific information in this. We might say, great. So you see, then you just enter here your message and you say add and run and the whole system starts. And if you want to have a look here at your assistant, you can see I just created here this assistant, the name, instruction, date, created, beautiful, edit, clone, test in playground. You can play around with this. But now we want to understand what is happening behind this playground. So let us switch back here. Yeah, there's a beautiful OpenAI cookbook I would recommend. Cookbookopenai.com. Over there, you will find exactly this file. 
under the directory example. The file is called Assistant API Overview in Python. So you have seen Playground, I just showed you, beautiful. So the name, the instruction, you have an ID, when it was created, beautiful. But you can also create Assistant directly through the Assistant API. So we're gonna code this now. And I stick here with this Python file. You say, as you know it, OpenAI, client OpenAI. And now we have the new Assist API. So client, you're still in beta, don't forget this. Assistant create. So we give it a name, tutor, for example. Then we give it the instruction. I just showed you this. And we choose a model. And now there's a new functionality show JSON, and it shows us exactly what just happened here behind the scene. So we have our ID, we have created, we have a description, we have here the instruction, we have here the model chosen, we have a name for our sync, we have activated here a specific object, this is now here our assistant, and for tool, we have neither retrieval nor code interpreter no anything else activated. Great. So now that we have our assistant created, as you can see here, very simple line of code and really almost identical as I just showed you here. Name, instruction, model, function, code interpreter, retrieval, upload files. I will show you this in a second. We have now that we say, okay, now we need to start a conversation with our GPT. So we have to create a thread, create a new thread. We're not gonna believe the command, client, beta, thread, create. So now we create an empty thread, but we have now an ID. So we know exactly when it was created. We know the metadata and we know that the object itself is a thread. And now you can have your message, your user input now added to this very specific thread. So we say now message, uh, client, beta, threads, message, create. So you have your thread ID, you know that you are the user, and now is your content. And I say, hey, I need to solve the equation, can you help me? So what happens behind the scene in the show, Jason, is such a beautiful new function. Have a look at this. So we have now what we have. We have now the content. And the content is, hey, I need to solve the equation. Can you help me? The type is, of course, a text. We know when it was created. The object is now a thread dot message within our thread. The role is, of course, the simple user. We have no run ID yet, and the thread ID is also given. So beautiful, this is it. Yeah, our message ID. And as you can see here, we have our thread ID with thread and our message ID with message and some ID with new, beautiful. Yes, 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 note, you are no longer sending the entire history. You will still be charged for the tokens in the entire conversation with each run. Yes, it is a commercial system. Thank you for reminding. So now that we have it, now we want to execute this message here. Notice how the thread we created is not associated with the assistant we created earlier. Threads existed independently from assistants. Beautiful. Now to get a completion from an assistant for a given thread, we must create now something new, and this is called a run. Create a run will indicate to an assistant that it should look at a message in the thread and take an action. Congratulations! Either by adding a single response or using some tools. So as we know, compared to the old chat completion API, the very old API from OpenAI, now, this is here a key difference to the brand new Assistant API. Yes, we know this. So, how you do this? You say client, beta, threads, run, create the run. And we have the thread ID and the Assistant ID. 
And then again, a beautiful show JSON command. And yeah, I don't have to read this to you. You know exactly what it is. So you have here the instruction from the assistant. You have here the model the assistant is going to do. You have the object. This is a run of a specific thread, the thread ID. And we have no tools like code interpreter. Beautiful. So creating a run is an asynchronous operation. Great. My mouse is going crazy. So excited here, my mouse. Where am I? Okay, here we are. An asynchronous operation. It will return immediately with the run's metadata, include a status that will initially be set to queued. Status will be updated as the assistant performs operation like using tools when adding messages. Beautiful. To know when the assistant has completed all the beautiful processing, you can pull the run in a loop. Okay, while we are only checking for the queued or in progress status, in practice, a run may undergo a variety of status changes, which you can choose to surface to the user. These are called steps, and we will see them a little bit later, but they are really interesting if you want to find out what the system is doing. Wait on run is, for example, a function that we define here. Yes, beautiful. Messages. Now that the run has completed, we can list the message in the thread to see what got added by the assistant to our beautiful thread. You remember the thread is the complete set of our user messages and that what is returned by the system. So you're not going to believe this client beta thread message list for a very specific thread ID. And we have this beautiful command, show JSON all the messages. And then we have yes, yes, yes. And the values, yes, subtract 11 from both sides and then divide 3 to find x equal 1. So this is now the return message from our assistant, very specific assistant ID. Yes, the run ID, the thread ID, yes. And here you have the original question. So you see it is here concatenated, concatenated, and you have the complete history. And you pay for each and every token in the complete history. Congratulations. Okay. Messages are ordered in reverse chronological order. Yes, of course. Let's ask our assistant to explain the result a bit further. This is nice. So we have a new message that we create here for a specific thread ID. The role is now user and the content is, could you explain this to me? Then we say for the specific thread, we run it. We create here a new run. We wait for the completion and then we retrieve again all the messages added after our last user messages. Beautiful. And then you get here the answer, certainly to solve x in the equation, yeah, subtract this and then and then you do so and so beautiful. So we have now a more detailed answer and we have all the different parameters. And now you know exactly why it is called an assistant API, because this is exactly what happens. So you have now an in-detailed knowledge how this assistant API works here on the most simple level of our objects. Example, put all of this together. Here's a code you need to use an assistant we created. So we create now a mathematical assistant. You have a specific ID and we have two functions. Create a message on a thread, then start and return a new run and get response, return the list of messages in a specific thread with a specific ID. Well, wait a second, wait a second, where am I? I'm working here on a new computer, so I'm not used to that yet. Okay, Mad Assistant ID, client here, yeah? submit the message, beautiful message create here, then return thread run create with all the IDs, and we get the response. We have here again the command, you know, Client beta thread message list 
quite a specific ID and we have an order ascending. My goodness, so we have this now beautiful asynchronous operation. We can actually get asynchronous behavior without the use of an asynchronous library. Yeah, okay, so we have here concurrent requests, run one. Well, three tasks, I need to solve the equation. Could you explain this to me? I don't like math, what can I do? Now all runs are executing and all runs are going. We can wait on each, forget the response. And then you say, hey, print your response one, two, three. And here you have the system responses for the message one, two, three. Linear algebra, I don't like math, what can I do? And here, user and assistant, you're welcome. Et voila. Beautiful. Now, next thing, tools. Isn't that beautiful? And we have two tools that are operational, up and running. We have our code interpreter, I use primarily for Python. Then we have our document retrieval, our rec functionality built in. And we have some custom function calling. Isn't that beautiful? So, as I showed you here with our playground, you have here for the code interpreter, just click to switch it on or off in your little GPT. Beautiful. Now, of course, we look now here at the API. So what we have, we have now our client assistant and we update the assistant now. This You will see this also with a specific assistant ID. And we have now a new tool. And we say the tool type is code interpreter. And you might say, yippee, isn't that beautiful? So we have here our beautiful command show, JSON. Now for the updated assistant, you see it is so easy, such a beautiful documentation. OpenAI cookbook, I really like it. And there you have it now. Now we have here a tool line where we, our tool is the code interpreter. Let's ask the assistant to use this new tool. And we have here, create thread and run. Create the first, yes, Fibonacci numbers with code. And yes, yes, yes. And here you have the first Fibonacci numbers. Great. So assistant uses here the tool. The tool is your code interpreter in the background. And you get a final response from the, for example, Python code execution. Yeah. Take a look at the run steps. If you want to have a finer detailed view of this, a run is composed of one or more steps. Step has a status you can query. So if you want to have a deep dive, this here is the command. What you do? Yeah, beautiful, great. We have the tool call and the message creation. Yes, yes, yes. This is more or less self-evident. Yeah. And the last thing I want to show you here is our retrieval. Our reg, we upload the document directly here to ChatGPT 3.5 or ChatGPT 4. And reg is taken care of by ChatGPT. The ability to upload files that the assistant will use as a knowledge base when answering the question. So we will have the embedding, we will have the vector search, we will have the cosine similarity approximation, we will have the return, we will have the re-ranking by a cross encoder. And everything is done for us. We do not need a vector store. We do not need anything to link in any way. We just go here and we say here at the retrieval, we switch on the retrieval functionality and we click on upload file. My goodness, this is so beautiful. As you see, upload file. And here you have your specific file. Hey, can I click on this file? Okay, yes, created today, beautiful. I have a file ID, a status ready. The purpose is for a distance, the file size created today, uploaded, and if you don't want it, you can just delete it. So you can upload your files, but we wanna see here the code. We wanna see here this beautiful code. Now we have a client, now not in a beta, but client files create. And here, for example, a file open, and we have here a specific PDF file. Great. And the purpose is to use for our assistant API. 
So what we have, we take our specific client where we have our ID for this specific assistant and we have client.beta assistant.update. Interesting, client beta assistant, but client files create. So this is already full-fledged and here we are still in beta. So tool, we have now code interpreter, great. And we have another tool, our retrieval tool by OpenAI. So if we upload a Python file, I would need a code interpreter to run this Python file, to execute the Python file. So therefore we can have two tools now. And the file gets, of course, an ID because we want to have an absolute ID, clear identification of the file. And you know our beautiful command, show JSON. And here we have everything that happens in the background. The tools, we have now the code interpreter and our retrieval rag, if you want. Create, thread, and run. What are some cool mathematical concepts behind this machine learning paper PDF explained in two sentences? And you get a reply. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, you have annotations and things. Beautiful. And the very last thing, yeah, but this is just for you to tell you it is also there. And this is function calling. And function calling is something beautiful. So you can specify function, specific, custom specific function. So during a run, the assistant can then indicate if it wants to call one or more function that you specified. Beautiful, beautiful. You can build your example here, a display quiz function for our mathematical tutor. So what you have, the function will have a title, an array of question. It will display something, the text, different choices you have. So yes, yes, yes. So have a look at the code. Then you see how it might look like. And here you have the output of the system. Yes. Now let's define the interface of this function in JSON format so our assistant can call it. This is here what you're used to. Just leave it here up to you. And then once again, let's update our assistant either through the dashboard. And you know this here you have here the possibility to enter your function. Let me show you this. So let me show you this here. Assistant API, this is what you know. We have the retrieval. Yeah, we can activate now the code interpreter. Why not? And then somewhere there is a function. And as you can see here, function, function calling. You notice I have a video on function calling for the old API. This is now the new one. So let's add a function. And as you can see here, we have a default example that tells you exactly what the system needs. So very simple, an API call to a weather station to get the current weather at my location. Or I think there are two. Yeah, so get the weather or get the stock price. You see, this is here the function you can ask to get stock price from a particular API, but let's stick with the weather. So you have, yes, thank you. You have a weather, you have a description, you have your parameters, your object, your string, the city and state, San Francisco. Then you have the type, you have Celsius or Fahrenheit and required is of course the location and, 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 and you just add here a function and please follow the example. They are really helpful. Great. Where was I? I was here. So you have seen, or you go here for this particular display quiz sample. Great. Or you go here with this assistant. And now we have the tool code interpreter. We have the tool retrieval of files, our rec things. And we have here the function call, our function calling functionality. So here we have now our show JSON command. So we have now our assist ID. We know when it was created. We have here file ID. We have here instruction, your personal mathematical tutor. We have our GPT-4 Turbo. We have the name of the assistant. We know that the object is itself an assistant. We know that the tool that we have is a code interpreter. We have a tool that is the retrieval rack. 
and we have a tool that is our function calling. And for this particular, we just import here our display quiz structure. And then we just say, hey, create a thread and run it. Yes, yes, yes. And if you check then the run, yes, you see beautiful. I won't go in detail into this. That's actual call with provided by the assistant. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, this is not so yubby, you so beautiful. So what I would recommend, go there, cookbook, open AI examples, and maybe you download this Python notebook and you run through it, you have a look yourself. It is great. And they tell you, hey, in the next section, we're going to have a look at annotations, at files, at parallel function calls, at multi-function calls, multi-assistant thread runs. Hey, and streaming is coming soon. So here we go. This is the very first run here through the explanation. What is happening here? If you call the new assistant API, now you have an understanding of all the things that happen in the background, how you do it here with the playground that we have here. Where's my playground? Here's my playground. But of course, let me tell you, of course, you can do this in, let's do this now, in GPT-4. So we go to chat GPT, we go to GPT-4, and in GPT-4 we say explore. Yes, I have to click on it, we create a GPT. We are the builder, what you like to make, then you just Give it some instructions. And you see, with every step, our little personal private little GPT is updated. We will now tell it what it has to do. Uh, where are we? Where am I? Playground. Still singing. I'm here at the rush hour, the internet rush hour currently. But it is so nice. So we just have to wait a little bit more. See, GPD behavior updated. A unique name. Okay, Assistant API. Assistant API, API Sage. Not really. So we update our GPT, update it, beautiful profile picture. My goodness, doll E3 is now generating something. Let's scroll forward. Great, and we get, hey, AI Explained is now set up and ready. Feel free to try it out in the playground, which is the separate chat dialogue to the right. So here we have now our preview and here we can now talk to it. But we have to configure it a little bit more because as I told you, I want here the code interpreter to be activated. I do not need dull E image generation. And for the knowledge, I will upload some files. So beautiful, as you see, I'm, I have now uploaded quite some files. And you can see here, there's a clear distinction between the files available for code interpreter. Those are those files down here. And then I have some MD files with some simple explanation. And this is now my new body of knowledge. This is now my rag, my retrieval augmented generation data set that I want that the system is now embedding. And whenever there's a question about one of this part, particular information pieces in my files. We have a cosine similarity execution from the embedding. We have a re-ranking for a specific answer. And those are now my files I uploaded and I have code interpreter because I'm using here a Python notebook. Great. So let's try this out. Let's go here. 
explain how the AI app work, what are use cases, how to integrate. Can you an example? Let's go with an example. Because I have uploaded quite some Python files also, I think an example should be already possible without any further update of its knowledge base. So interesting to see, yes, but you see here, although it has now the 3.5 Turbo, it is still using the old API, the chat completion create API. So here you have the case when this was already in the pre-training data set of here our GPT-4 system, and it is not overwritten now here by this specific added if you want retrieval augmented generation data set. So this is always the question when the system relies on its pre-trained data set or when the system is now searching here. So we have to make this explicit here for a vector search functionality. Now we say use the new assistant API instead of the chat completion API. So you will see now it has to check here this rack-based data, does a vector search on this. And let's see if we get now the correct API, the latest API. So you always have to specify really absolutely precisely which functionality you want to have. Otherwise, as happened right now, the system relies on its pre-training data set and not here on the latest. As you see, we have now an assistant create here with the new GPT 3.5 Turbo. But the role is still here a little bit of the old fashioned way. Okay, so we have to, yeah, you see, it is not really following here absolutely the new information, it is still inputting some of the old API structure. This is an old API structure. Interesting. I don't know if it's still operational, but as you can see, we even have to specify this further. So even if we provide here some knowledge in form of reg, it is not said that here, it is only using this external knowledge. Let's try it in a new way. So let's have a look now. I said, hey, use only the information and the code provided in the uploaded files. And now you can see analyzing. Yeah, this is what we want. So you have to be absolutely specific what you want. And show me only the Python code from the uploaded files for this task. Can we have a look here at analyzing what it's doing? Yes, it goes here in my uploaded assistant API over your Python notebook and displays only the first 1000 characters. Oh, come on, only the 1000 characters. Okay. I'll now extract a Python code related to using the assistant API from this notebook for your request. Please give me a moment to represent the relevant code snippets. Yes, of course. It is now analyzing. Let's have a look here. Read and format. Yeah, okay, yes. The first three code cells for private. Okay. Just the first three code cells. My goodness. Okay. Utility function. Yeah, it's all correct, but I don't want the first three code cells. I want to have here my, so as I show me the, the new assistant API command to generate a new assistant. And I know it is there in the notebook. Filtering the code cells. 
Assistant creation code for cell encode if OpenAI Assistant create in cell, okay, display relevant code snippet if found. Okay. Now this is gonna be interesting. Is it able to do this? No. No specific example for creating a new assistant found in the notebook. Unbelievable. Yeah, you so you see, it is not perfect yet. It is quite a challenging task, but I think I stop here. I think I guess you have now a good idea from the strength and the weaknesses from this new GPT. So even if you upload here the information and you have done everything right, it is still in beta. So we have to wait for the final version. But I think we understand now exactly how it works. As you can see, we have here our GPT created here with chat GPT-4. Then I showed you here on the playground how you can do this. For example, with a GPT 3.5 Turbo, we went through this. And of course, as I told you, if you want to have really a deep dive here into the coding that you understand exactly what happens within the API, this is here our explanation we started with in this video. So now you have three different blocks. You have here the chat GPT command where we can create our GPT, you know now how to do it in the playground, and you know exactly if you go to the terminal how to code this. And this closes here our very first introduction here to the very brand new Assistant API from OpenAI, which is still in beta. I hope it was informative, you learned a little bit, and it would be great to see you in my next video.